new session for Business Central where um, today we're going to check the uh, chart of accounts. Uh, with this, well, we have already Business Central open. We're going to have more or less one hour session. And uh, whenever you feel like asking something, please let me know. And or at the end of the session, if you have questions as well, please feel free um, and ask me anything you, you need. So thank you. Okay, let's just now begin the, our presentation. For the, we're gonna our webinar. We start with a presentation, and let's just jump into it. All right. So part of the uh, regular uh, setups that we need to do within Business Central, of course, will be all finance uh, related. Uh, since we have this, uh, let's say, first module. One of the most important tasks is that um, we can, uh, we are able to understand uh, how do we operate with the chart of accounts and uh, how then we set it up in order to actually uh, use it properly. So um, basically the COA or chart of accounts will be just a list of accounts used uh, in, your in your organization. And this list can be numerical, alphabetical or alphanumeric. So each nominal ledger account is unique to allow uh, its ledgers to be located. Then uh, this list is typically arranged in the order of the customer appearance of accounts in the financial statements. So profit and loss accounts followed by balance sheet accounts, etc. So we have a basic structure, let's just follow it. And let's try to understand how we have a, this uh, uh, first list. And then we're gonna have a demo, right? So. Um, if we have a, of course, a simple, simple lines, then a, the simple chart of accounts will be divided through, let's say, sections. Okay, so we're gonna have some headings first, like the sales cost of sales or direct expenses, administration expenses, etc. Right. So we need to establish first a, a, all of these <laughs> headings will, a, with nominal accounts that make up the chart of accounts. So establishment expenses may consist of rent, rents, repairs, and balance sheet accounts. Then we have a, basically the asset accounts, cash accounts receivable, prepared expenses, required inventory, land, land buildings, vehicles, and equipment, etc. right? A liability, of course, payables, current payables, notes, long-term, stockholders, et cetera. Revenue um, will be a, a basically the, the part of the the first part of the income statement, and we have the sales revenue, sales returns, and allowances, sales discounts, interest income, and expenses accounts, advertising, expense bank fee depreciation, expense payroll, etc. etc. Basically, we're gonna have, of course, a trial balance, and we begin with this. This is a list of the active general ledger accounts. A balance trial does not guarantee that there is no error, okay, just to mention it. But then we have this a type of accounts that we're gonna use, the ones that in Business Central, we need to, of course, create. As we already mentioned, well, some of them, uh, like asset accounts, represent the different types of economic resources owned by the business, okay? And basically that, then the liability represents the different types of economic obligations of a business. Then the equity represents the civil equity of a business, okay? After, of course, the Assets, all the liabilities. That's the past part. We create those accounts that will be affected by the model. And here, well, accounts, interest, insurance. Contra accounts from terms, a uh, meaning to the dog, the value of which are opposite. If Vagabond mentioned that for accounts, for instance, contrasted account is accumulated depreciation, uh, the most common uh, example. And then this label represents the deductions to a relatively permanent asset like a building. Okay, so after this, what I'm going to do is move to Business Central. Uh, because in this section, we have uh, basically the chart of accounts. And I'm going to share 
with any of you who decide uh, to have a presentation where all the explanation that I have will be in this PowerPoint. In this case, I'm gonna present directly this is specific fields like related to the GL account creation, like the number and the name, if it's part of the income balance, debit and credit, or account type. Just as an example of this first spreadsheet that will be shown through the demo in Business Central directly, but here I'm gonna have text so you can learn if you want all the different fields that we have here in the GL account creation and the descriptions in this PowerPoint presentation, all of them I'm going to explain it. Uh, we have different sections like the general path in the GL account card with all these fields. So later, the idea is that after this presentation, you can come and review if you have any doubt once you create a new GL account, you can see this specific uh, spreadsheets, I mean, this specific PowerPoint, and then as well, the video presentation whenever you need. So any doubt can be solved immediately. The first thing then when we create a then I'm going to show the sections, the segments that they have the content around the chart accounts, and I'm going to solve. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, here then, um, I'm just going to continue then explaining in business central directly. Um, I was showing here the, the balance sheet and the, the chart of accounts. Basically, we're going to start then with the specific sections. And here, we are going to have all the specific uh, chart of accounts with the numeric values, right? In Business Central, what we do is that we generate the balance sheet with the specific sections. Like in this case, we have the assets. One second, please. Let me try to reconnect. Okay. And uh, once we have the uh, every section created, um, we're gonna have a summarization, of course, of every segment. Like in this example, the uh, where we have the specific final balance, we since we have the fixed assets, then we have the fixed asset totals, and then the total assets, right? So then liabilities, etc. So here in all this section, we have all these numeric values. We have the income statement then, and so on. So we are going to be creating and formulating all the totals and subtotals in Business Central. So just as a list, then I'm just going to immediately after I have this um, first catalog, let's say, we're going to import your balance sheet and your uh, income statement. And then we are going to have the, the GL account card per se to show some specific information. And this is how then we are going to start create everything. Um, first of all, we're going to have your numeric values here. Also, this could be a, a, with, with specific characters whenever you need them. All right. So uh, for me, uh, the idea is a um, percentage of what is the criteria or the logic behind the uh, numbering. Um, anytime we need to create a new account, uh, we are, Business Central is going to provide us a new number, of course, and we just need to start filling the information of, of, of all of these fields. And then the first thing is just to have the name. And we're going to have this specific field that is going to tell us if it's part of the income or the balance sheet. And this is important then later for a specific reports, right? So we're going to begin with it and then the account category. The account category then will be used for later a reporting processes because in Power BI, we have what we call account schedules that now are automated. And of course, we have KPIs and financial specific formulations where we can uh, 
a review the specific values for the assets liability so we can why not calculate some ratios important uh, reports that will be automatically created for you with these total values so we categorize all our specific accounts in any of these specific categories right remember this is because uh, for instance business central by checking the value of the assets then the income out and the outcome to calculate the cash flow. And this will be automated for you. You don't have to do anything. We have KPI, we have Cortana, we have a lot of different features connected to your financial chart of accounts to then calculate with the category and the subcategory some other specific ratios and report automated for you. As an example, a, for the asset section, I created many accounts that have the category current asset subcategory cash. You can see then here by selecting this specific field, different accounts that were here listed because of this specific categorization through these two fields. And as well, you can see how the totals immediately was summarized. This is what I'm talking about. You just need to categorize your specific um, the specific GL accounts you start creating, any account that you create should be part of these categories. And we just create this specific uh, automated with automation and with specific tools, this specific type of reports. And this is just the initial one, right? But we have further and more complex calculation with the specific and some reports with these specific two fields and categorizing accounts. Then we just need the debit credit card a different uh, field and for now one of the, uh, we have a uh, possibility to select both debit or credit right just in case you need to isolate specific type of a uh, transactions with debit or credit for specific accounts well is there and here we have a, 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 a field that you need to uh, create you need to use when you create an, an account so for instance the account type will be posting heading total, begin total, and end total. Let's explain this field when we create a new GL account, because here, uh, when we create, you can check immediately that we have different sections. So for me, I have the fixed asset um, title, right? And then we have a series of accounts that will be summarizing into a total. Let's then review this part. In the first, in, in, in the beginning, I'm going to check the uh, account liabilities. This is an account that is a title for me. And here we begin the section for the liabilities with the account to uh, 20,001. So with the specific account type that we represent, we need to start any section with the begin total account type. Once we understand that, then we have all these different accounts that will be in this specific section in the liabilities part until we summarize the specific total liabilities. When we get to that specific account for any of your section, then we are gonna review the account type for this specific account where we just review the opposite. So we had before the begin total and at the end, we just now have an end total. Simple as. And what is then the specific nomenclature for this? It's not a problem if you use numbers, if you use uh, uh, accounts uh, with uh, a specific uh, letters, characters, alphanumeric, right? So we are going to do the following. How do we input specific accounts that will be uh, representing only the liabilities? and we will, should be summarized in the total liabilities. Well, if we create any account that actually follows after the number 2100, if we create another uh, GL account with starting with 2010, and the next should be the last number, let me explain it. I'm gonna create a new account as an example, where I could fit any G new GL account into this specific section, right? For the total liabilities. The same, let's just review another example with the income part. In the income statement, we have the income first title section. And here is once again, the account type begin total for to begin the income section, 
right? And at the end, we have as well the total income. And if I check this part, well, I have an end total for this specific section. What happened with these accounts that are summarizing this total of 6,000, um, um, uh, $652,000? I'm gonna just open any of these accounts, like the first one for the income. And in this case, this account type is neither begin or total, but it's only posting. If one of our, of our accounts that we create has this specific value, it means that I can post with either a general journal, a PO, a sales order, or any other transaction to summarize specific value. And as well, I could click on this total or this balance for this account, and you're gonna check all the detail. So uh, for me, it's more important actually to represent the information in, um, let's check all the values, with the dates and the GL account, the same GL account, and all the transactions with the different document numbers for this specific, to, to review the detail of this account. Why it allowed to have these specific balances posted into the account? Because the account type is posted, okay? So we could say that we, by creating the sections with begin and end total, and then creating your posting, a accounts well, we are done. And then also we have another two options. Heading is something that you insert in the chart of accounts. If you select the heading type of account, it's because you are only inputting text in among your specific chart of account list. That's useful well if you want to add a specific title only, like the this is the balance sheet or something like that, but it's not going to be part of your calculations. It's just well. The, the heading just or, or text, let's say, when you print it as well. And this total, this is very important because we have another field related to the total account type. Sometimes when we create a chart of accounts, we just do not only create our segments to summarize specific values and then match your specific a balance sheet and inputting a new values coming from the monthly operation. But sometimes we like or we tend, we accountants try to summarize, create formulations in the actual uh, chart of accounts to be shown. Um, and then if that's a necessity, we would need to create a total account type and we would need a formulation here. With the formula, formulas I'm going to go at the end. We are just beginning with the specific first fields, okay? So once we get this, we, we can create an actual GL account. Let's do it now. And what I would like to do is go and create a new account, let's say for as an expense, which is a, typically a very long, a very long, uh, a sort of uh, a, a very long list for all the expenses for the company. And if you can see, I have the number 600, okay? So, so I'm not beginning this account from one, two, three, four, five. Let me explain you what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna to check to create a new GL account and how Business Center is going to refer and how it inserts is that I would like to follow this specific number, 61,900 as an example, okay? So if I just continue doing, that means that I should be creating the 61,901. Let's just do it as an example. And we just just going to check this information. The following number will be 61901. Okay. For me, this will be a general or miscellaneous expense. And this means that once this is created, I need to select the income balance. For me, in this case, it will be just part of the income statement. And the account category for me will be part of an expense section. Okay, once I generate, I just need to select the account category and immediately, according to the section you select, all these specific type of expenses will be appearing, okay? So now this will be for your company. And when once I have created this, guess what? I'm going to need to select any of these specific uh, uh, type of expenses that I have in my company. And once I have this, immediately, 
any transaction that is posted to my new GL account will be summarizing into this specific balance, all right? So as you can see, will be also part of this uh, account list for every section. Why? Because with this initial balances that I summarizing, uh, also Business Central is going to help me to calculate specific cash flow with Cortana or different reports created automatically for me. Okay, I'm just gonna select a, a section that could fit maybe this specific a type of account. Um, that I'm just going to review, and I'm gonna have miscellaneous will be part of the benefits, uh, utilities or other income and expenses. Utilities, expenses, just just to mention. So I'm just going to select this specific category here. And well, also because this doesn't uh, have a post yet. And well, this is a posting account because it will be part of the expenses section. Currently, the balance will be zero. With this, we could say that we have finalized the first GL account. But for now, since it's a new GL account that I have created, what I'm going to need to process now is the identification of this specific GL. So what it means is that if you can see, well, you can check that the title is not specifically lined with the other GL account uh, names. Why this is happening? Because Business Central yet by this number do not understand where it should be located. We are at the end, and this is what I wanted to explain, locating our GL accounts in different sections by the specific GL number, okay? So in, in this way, we need to follow up this is specific numerical values and the business central, independently of how, when you click new, you create your new account, you need to then process by using the indent chart of account functions to then look, your business central will be locating your account in any section according to the numerical value, if it's larger or smaller than any of the values that it sees and then it's going to as well match and update the indentation of the GL account in the chart of accounts, okay? And remember what I mentioned about the begin total and end matching and total in deep one level, okay? Total for each end total is also updated. So I'm just gonna click on yes. And immediately after that, this new account is now part of this expenses section. And remember that it has a posting a account type, okay? So now if I use this new GL account, well, the idea is that immediately it's going to uh, summarize this part. Now, what happened here after I have created this first uh, fields? If I want, I could add it, this, to, uh, this account to be reconciled, okay? Remember that if you toggle within the specific fields, well, you're gonna check the, these descriptions. And now I'm just going to be able to select whenever I need to reconcile something, well, this checkbox. Now, if I also would like to have in my general journals more information than only the miscellaneous expenses, whenever we create a general journal, this will be the description of the line if I use GL account. So another miscellaneous, a expense will be posted through a general journal whenever I select this GL account. Sometimes some of my accountants tell me, Noe, I have an issue because I normally use my own descriptions in my general journals and I do not only want to see the account name in my, I sometimes print my, my journals, I sometimes send them through an email or something like that, or I, just for later review of the detail. Well, if you want more, a information, please select the automatic extended a text. In this case, you're gonna have a new field where you're gonna review in every journal and you're gonna be able to input more like, a please review for later. This, a, this a specific expense came from uh, a monthly rent or something like that, and you're gonna be able to type it, okay? And then we're gonna have then the direct posting. This is very important because we do not always allow all the GL accounts to be posted by a general journal, such as the accounts receivable, the bank account uh, um, that after our reconciliation, somebody can, uh, through the specific uh, sub ledger, can create 
uh, transaction. The same happens for AR. Uh, you have received a, 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 a AR only the money that you receive from your customers. Okay, so that balance should be fine with all the customer balances on owning money to you. Okay, so we cannot allow because we post into AR through invoices when and through the specific cash receipt journals. When we receive money from a customer, we are matching that against an invoice, right? And then we're going to get our AR balances, as an example. Well, then we cannot allow that specific, those specific type of sub, uh, uh, accounts that are managed through a sub ledger and, and not manually with a general journal. We need to block it to be posted manually. Then we have this specific a field, a, this is specific a setup with this checkbox to then block that account to be posted by only manual a, journals, okay? Then the direct posting is, is like this. In, this. in this case, I'm going to allow this account to be used in a general journal. I do not use only this one in purchase orders or invoices or anything. I can use it anytime, anywhere, and then the direct posting is allowed, okay? If it has a subledger account, like the depreciation asset account, total depreciation for your assets, that is an expense account. Well, I don't usually, if I have the fixed asset module, I have an engine in Business Central that is, is normally is going to automatically calculate the depreciation for us. So it's preferably, is going to check the asset value, the specific monthly depreciation value extracted from the book value and posted as an expense. It's pre-calculated and we cannot then come into the uh, monthly depreciation account and just post it manually because it, it's going to match the actual value, right? So in that case as well, another example, we just uh, don't allow the direct posting, only if you're going to use it in your general journals. The blocking a field will be helping me to then actually block it, but uh, in this case, I'm not going to be able to use it anymore, right? And this is for general journals. So if you open a chart of account, a, a, a purchase order, right, to post into this expense account, you're not going to be able to uh, actually post. Maybe use it and insert it, but when you post, a document is not going to allow you. Okay, this could be for maybe reconciliation process normally. Then, uh, after the reconciliation process, well, I can then uh, 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 uncheck this specific field and everything will be then, this account could be used normally once again. Let's go now to the posting section. This is specific part is sometimes not easy for, for, for the, the, the first time we, we actually, uh, start to work with this. And now, uh, the general posting type will be only used and only used when you know that only the account can be used to purchase or sell. Why? Because it generates expenses like taxes, um, another type of, not well, taxes and expenses, of course, right? But let's say that it generates expenses and we need to understand what expense should be calculated independently of the type of expense. So if you're gonna use it in the port as a purchase or sale, well, select, in this case, I'm gonna use it as an example, and the general posted type will be for me for purchase, for expenses, as an example. But then later, you need to select the specific field for the taxes. In the American version, you need, you're gonna do it by the specific a type of, uh, of product that you use, okay? Only for the American version. Well, this could be uh, expenses for uh, supplies, okay? General supplies is a miscellaneous account. Well, maybe office supply. I can use this account for any type of expense uh, that is not specifically related to operations or something like that. Just, you know, an expense that you use anytime when you don't have a specific account actually. Then the tax group should be calculated because sometimes different type of expenses have different uh, taxes, okay? And as well for the uh, other countries, okay? We have to fill for expenses, the bad business posting group and the bad product posting group. For us, I'm just going to create a new example. The bad product posting group will be taxable. 
uh -huh. um, let's say tax or tax 15, something like that. Oh, this could be, excuse me, domestic and foreign, okay? So it depends if you're going to be using this a uh, specific account for for a, a domestic or a foreign expenses, as an example, right? So, and this is for all the countries except the USA, okay? But business product costing group is for the calculation of taxes in combination with the type of specific vendor, okay? So this is a suggestion. I would say that I will be using my supplies only for domestic purposes, okay? But actually this field comes from the vendor, okay? Just I'm putting, putting it here just as a suggestion. When you use it in a general journal, Business Central is going to ask you how to, what specific value for taxes should I suggest you, okay? But in any journal, you can use the account, but at the end, you would need to just decide which type of a, a tax. So we have the tax normally, I don't know, tax 10%, tax 15%, and tax, this is for all countries except USA, tax 20%. Okay, with this, what I'm saying is that, well, for this specific domestic type of expenses, well, the charge will be 20%. Hopefully that's then easy to understand for all the values for all countries except for America. Once you have this, you are able to use this. You're gonna be able to use this for the uh, for purchases. One second. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I was saying then, uh, for, for us the value, if you want to use this, because if you don't have the taxation value, Business Central is not going to allow you to use it in purchase orders or purchase invoices, okay? So pay attention to this. And this is as well very important because uh, not all of the accounts will be used through that specific a type of uh, documents, right? Some of, your, uh, some of you are only using all the accounts in general journals. Well, in that case, you, don't, you won't have issues with these posting values. Remember, the posting is because whenever you, we use in purchase or sales operations, any of our accounts, we need just to suggest and set up the specific taxing uh, value that it should have, okay? Now, the consolidation will be a part of a, uh, those of you who have maybe a different companies, right, running under a consolidation process that at the end is going to give you some uh, final independent uh, uh, financial statements. But at the end, uh, in different companies that could be in your legal entity, you could have different chart of accounts with different numbers. So the consolidation debit account and consolidation credit account could be how do we actually then use this in the consolidation report? So maybe this could be the account a uh, seven thousand as an example. Whenever we are actually going to a uh, consolidate, well, and translating this account into the consolidation company. Okay, only for those of you who have that type of operation, we can consolidate by creating a new company with a different chart of accounts. If maybe your companies do not have a standardized numeric values, you would need translation to tell, okay, the value for this account in my consolidation company is this value, okay? So we have automatic process to generate your financial reports, financial statements automatically consolidating the values for all your companies. We just need the translation for the account value that represents the same account in the other consolidation a chart of accounts. Okay, then we have the exchange rate adjustment. So we just normally adjust, of course, use your ex exchange rate processes, but that has got to do then when we just need as well some reporting values. So if it's preferably a, 
uh, to specific adjustments, the reporting value, we have all a multi-currency reporting processes, okay? Just for you to learn. Whenever you need something, you can ask me for further, or maybe I can represent another demo with the demo with this operation I'm mentioning. But all your financial statements, just to mention it, can be uh, viewed by the accountant in any currency that you work within your company or companies. So uh, I have, for instance, as an example, my currencies in this uh, demo companies, if I go to the currency section, then I would like to understand how to operate with the uh, multi-currency operation. The idea is that, first of all, you can input any transaction with any of these specific currencies, but as well, you could as well a uh, report with these specific values, reviewing the exchange rate that was specifically for that period or even for that day if you want it, right? It's up to you. So we adjust the different values. If you can see here, I have plenty of decimal values um, or numeric values after the decimal point. So we need to adjust these values to maybe two or three decimals at most. Remember, all your financial statement can be used to report in different currencies, okay? Once this is done, Currencies are, currencies are generated, we then will use the reporting a tab to say if we are just or we don't just amount, write your currencies, and then your financial statement or your balance sheet income statement can be represented in another currency. And that's not a problem, that's an out of the box process. Finally, we have the cost accounting a section. Well, a, this is only, in this, in, in this case, we have a cost type number. Sometimes and some of you represent or like to represent the financial values not only by a chart of accounts, okay? We sometimes use what we call cost centers or profit centers, not to be explained further, but just to be mentioned in this presentation, which is quite uh, related to basic learning procedures. But just to mention it, we have an advanced a cost accounting module that will be representing with other criteria or logical view the same account information related to cost. For instance, in a um, factory, of course, that I have many accounts related to the uh, manufacturing of, of specific products. Let, let's say that um, we have the, the inventory, then we have the cost of uh, the, the WIP values, work in progress, and then we have finished products. That's for the inventory. But as well, we have by different areas, the, the same expenses account, right? The expenses, the same expenses section, but we need to establish by specific, let's say machine, the values related to the cost that was generated by a machine, by specific, a, not only a machine, but something more complex like a, a team of people with different tools, with different type of uh, procedures working, right? But we as well work with that, okay? That's not manufacturing. What I'm mentioning is a cost center. So like this expense account is a collector of expenses related to only miscellaneous. Well, we could have another criteria like work centers that represent in a manufacturing environment, another type of collector for only costs, okay? Just to mention it, we have cost centers, like in this example, we have profit centers, like if you want to see a, a business central and use the same accounts to be represented with another criteria or logic, that could be, for instance, a profit center could be generated when you in the same, let's say, supermarket, right? Uh, for those of you who work in the retail or wholesaling industry, you might have different channels of operations, of course. But sometimes we, in, in, in a financial way, directly with the information that you post, you would like to generate a profit center, which is, I generate sales, but they have costs as well. And I would like to see the specific results, not for the entire company, but a section, a, a logical section of it. As an example, I would like to have then the profit center calculation by the specific uh, um, 
section or department in my supermarket. So let's say that you sell in a supermarket deli, deli food. We have retail, we have a POS and all of that. But you would like to see by all the deli generated by all your stores, right? And you have different supermarkets that generate a, sale, a, a deli operation and you sell food. Oh, very good. You have then a POS selling everything. But from the financial view, you would like to consolidate all that information from the daily uh, operation among the different supermarkets in, that is in, posted in your chart of accounts, then we will create a cost type number that is called daily, okay? And we would input daily into the cost type field to mention that this expense account, well, will be part of the daily calculation only, okay? As an example, right, okay. We do not only have the chart of accounts. Now, we also have, once we generate the categories, let me show you what I was trying to mention before, the GL account categories will be then represented after we generate all the chart of accounts. And here you have your first value. It's another, an easier way to understand the same, a chart of accounts, but in this case, by section, category and subcategory. So here we have, and this will be then used for further reports. Here we have how um, the list of accounts that, for instance, I have prepared expenses, the yield, yield account 10, 1,500 and 10,600 is part of the prepared expenses. The total currently is zero. And how do we generate it? Because we have an account category and subcategory field that is going to help it then to generate this basic value. Once you have then this basic information, for me, the, the idea is that I would like to just review the specific reports, basic reports that we're gonna represent, okay? And as well, I'm going to at last show the uh, account schedules that is your financial information for the accountant automated with rules, with analysis, with formulas, and with more complexity than just this. But we need to start now working on the following. Okay, so I have the chart of accounts with all the fields mentioned. I have the subcategories and the categories and subcategories, correct? Very well. Once then I generate that, I need to check the first reports that you can use, of course, it's not only about the GL account creation, but you need to start working on the actual uh, type of reports that, that, that you are going to have. So let's review then because you can have for all the transactions that you post, let your, let your entries. That is the detail. Comments, whenever you need, you can add comments. Then we have extended text. Remember that, receivables, payables, work use list, and the balances. Whenever you create an AGL account, you need initial reports to start working with, okay? Of course, we have the GL account balance, okay? Then the GL by dimension, I'm going to go that with that in a moment. And GL account with your budgets. I have not talked about budgets, but we have functionality and you need an immediate representation with the actual information from your actual budgeting processes and then the real values, okay? And all the chart of accounts will be represented with all the budgeted values, okay? So let's take a look then on how these basic reports work. I'm gonna take a look at the GL balance or GL account balance as well, not a problem. And sometimes for me as an accountant, I don't like to see the GL accounts, remember only by a, a fixed value, okay? I could review by the day, by the week, the debit, the credit amounts, your dates, the period names, or the net change or balance at date as an example. Right. So for this specific account, let me just go to another one that has a value like the checking account. Oops. And here, once again, learn to check your first reports. I need to check the balance. OK, as this works as well in addition. OK, click on the GL account and review. You as an accountant are going to need to review the, 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 with periodic ways in very short term all the values that you have. So check the balance and then, well, we have the credit or debit amount for specific dates. So we have here the weeks or we can check the 
the dates, how the, the actual uh, balance change through a specific time. This could be then valuable to start checking information. And um, from in this case, we can see how the value changed. Okay, so you can as well click on review the actual detail. So maybe I'm trying to look for a payment. When it happened, I cannot find something. Okay, let's review then the balance for a specific dates. And here you have the actual dates for all the procedures that you need. So this is a very good tool to start working, to, to start using. And then we're going to check, you have the balance. <laughs> I have not explained the concept of dimension yet, but also the, the, the budget. The budget is not something complex. Uh, we can understand immediately that it's a benchmark to see and review differences with the real values. As well, why not check then the balance update and the change? How do you like to see your, your monthly budget report by day, the week, the month, the quarter? So you're going to need to find some values at the end and some variances at the end. With this, well, remember that we normally use chart of accounts with numeric or alphanumeric values. This is quite cumbersome when we need to check more detail because we could have a very long list. So from now on, you're going to use your categories to check, okay, I want to check the uh, budgeting um, processes for the income statement, okay? So now we generate these specific categories and we just immediately for all the tools that we have in Business Central, like this reporting, basic reporting tool, well, here the accountant can just immediately filter a, according to the categories, the processes like the balance, the budgeting values. Then at last but not least, let me explain you another concept which is the dimension value that we sometimes we just need to immediately use. You can see that I have areas filter and department filter. What is that? Why, from where and how we can then more than just this review the values that will be logic for my company. Sometimes you need to uh, divide your financial statement. This is very normal. The accountant need to work on an Excel that will be separating your, let me, this is what the income section, well, rep, uh, representing the income uh, uh, by geographical area, country, state, a uh, supermarket, however you want, okay? How do I do that? Well, create a, a geographical area filter, okay? As well, let's say that we, we were talking about expenses, let's just review the section. If you can see, well, I have, the expenses section only with this tool, instead of having to open just the regular chart of accounts, well, this is what I used to navigate. Here you can see as an example, my miscellaneous expense account new, that since it was part of the expenses category, now will be used in every report for expenses. But I would like to filter sometimes these expenses for the manufacturing, for the uh, general administration or the offices, in other words. And uh, then I would like to review the expenses for a specific team of people, the sales department. The sales department as well have, has expenses. And I need to filter in real time. I hate to go to Excel and not update everything every time or have to wait for the end of the week to generate a report for my expenses. How can I check that immediately? Then I will need to create a filter for the department, right? As an example, I have administration, production, and sales. This concept of filtering, this is what we call dimensions. The dimension value list is a specific independent criteria related to your a financial information to divide, split, slice, and dice your financial information into your different filters according to your company criteria. Okay, just to learn, this is not a dimension lesson, but we can have eight of the different filters and two of them that will be the most important. It will be represented in all the financial tools, two of them, which is the department and in, in my example, and the areas filter. Let's try take a look at the area. I have America, Europe, Asia, and North America. So hopefully this is a, a clear explanation. 
If you want, you we can create this specific uh, functionality for you in your company so you can use it like me. So, but with the logical criteria that you use. So for me as an accountant, I forget, and well, since I knew Business Central, I have never used Excel anymore to represent or create reports. We just show you this type of trainings to review how you can use these initial tools for reporting. So go into them, review all of them that you have within Business Central, or if you are learning, this is the first time that you see Business Central, ask me for more information to review the reporting capabilities tool. But the idea here is that all those reports that were created previously in Excel, now we are going to do it immediately with this a specific reporting tools as an example and well the chart of accounts overview right is of course well the normal the normal report but represented with this specific layout when you can see all your total by the change balance the begin account type the name and the the, the number as well you can see all these reports in excel you can open it, this in excel and your financial reports related to all chart of accounts information as well will be, will be exported. We don't only have all these balancing tools, but we have a last tool that we call account schedules. Let me just open. This is the last topic for today's webinar. With all the configurations that you do, we have the following tool that is going to help you to as well, of course, do the, the, the reports that you require uh -huh. without needing, needing further information or maybe you are going to save a lot of time by using this tool. The account schedule tool then, first of all, will be automatically created by the categories and subcategories that you actually, uh, have. When, when you created your chart of accounts, you created accounts with categories and subcategories. All these reports like the balance, M balance, M cash flow, M income, and M retained earnings were automatically calculated by Business Central for us. So I haven't done, so I done anything. So I going to create and review the account schedule functionality uh, by, I don't know, checking the uh, retaining earnings that start with M and with Business Central, we can immediately have reports generated and here you can see, well, the formulation for the retained earnings. So it's retained earnings period star, the net income, distribution to shareholders, and the retained earnings period end. Okay. How you would like to see to calculate return earnings? Well, normally maybe by, by a year. Okay. And so on. Another type of report. Uh, and here, well, I, I don't have yet the values because I haven't actually. Uh, run this a uh, a uh, for the for the end of my period okay sorry for 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 showing this first report but let's take a look at the m income the m income there will be there if i check the overview part well i just would need would need to a uh, oops Simple. okay sorry i just would need to uh, review and open my uh, window by clicking on this field. And here I can see now the net change of my income statement only. And guess what? Here, let's use the Ameri the uh, this report for the income statement for America, Europe, Asia, or North America, right? So you can now use these tools once again but for the administration, production, sales, Right, and the account schedule includes everything. The dimension, the budgets. So here could be included a budget. Here you can toggle between day, week, month, quarter, or year, and specific accounting periods, and the date filters. This is very important because from now on, you are going to be able to actually navigate, let's call it that way, and drill down into any type of functions, budgets, criteria for geographical area, internal departments, different periods, everything you were doing before, normally in Excel, now is available for you after you create your GL accounts with these 
advanced tools for reporting. Well, actually, the account schedule functionality was created like 10 years ago, okay? Let's say that it was the initial approach to actual BI, okay? I'll try to get a, a tool that was also helpful for the actual accountants to actually um, uh, review their financial information with their own flavor in the company so they can immediately print, can immediately uh, send to Excel with the actually already created report. So you don't have to, hey, I would like to, I don't know, make an analysis for the different periods. Uh, I don't know, income statement with periods, okay? It's very easy now for us to create an, an, an analysis such as in the current period with the, with the next period. If, let, let me see, the screen is not fitting my, <coughs> this window is not fitting my screen because I was sharing another screen. Okay, the current period against the last period with the GL budgets as well, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, a, the, the process, okay, uh, here, another one calculated by Cortana. We're gonna have as well some calculations created uh, once we generate our GL account uh, with the specific criteria and the specific setups that I have been mentioning with like the budgets, the dimensions, okay, and the account categories. Uh, we have also Cortana coming now. Uh, Cortana is a, a, an algorithm creating in Azure, it's a Microsoft a service provided for the cloud environments. Azure then, and what we can connect Azure to um, <coughs> on-premises environments. So with this, what we are doing here is that we are connecting Cortana or artificial intelligence, this is the commercial name, that is going to review your financial categories with the specific values to then review and create a cash flow forecast. Okay, so with this, well, these are the actual values, but let's take a look. You're gonna start creating sales orders in the future, purchase orders in the future, your debt is going to increase in the future, your accounts receivable or collections can, they are not being enhanced in the future as well. Well, all of those variables that will be then here, if Business Central and Cortan knows your categories, subcategories, dimensions can do the same that you are doing in these tools, but for the future. And it's going to have us a represent, give us a representation of the cash flow in this example. So you can review the receivables, the sales orders. So I can see that for instance, <coughs> why in my company, if you can see here, well, I can see that receivables, payables, and I have a total of minus eight, 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 eight thousand. So my, my operation is still good currently. Why? Because with this demo environment, well, in the demos, I have an actual review that I'm profitable. I'm just doing demos. But somehow, actually, I was replenishing with, um, <coughs> sorry, I was creating some Cortana forecast for sales operations. And according to this, in the one of the uh, following weeks that I'm going to have, in, the, in actually, starting from now, the cash flow is going to be increased. And if I take a look, well, the, the specific green color that I have here or blue color, color is for sales orders. So Cortana is expecting review for, uh, uh, while reviewing the last year a GL account values, well, is understanding that for this specific period of time, well, is going to be able then for a quarter to forecast that we're going to have an increase in my sales operations. Then the cash flow curve forecast is going to use this exactly same functionality that we have in the uh, uh, in this account schedule tool that we had 10 years ago that was very unique and was a new functionality 10 years ago. But guess what? Even if it's very functional, because you don't need to use it for everything Excel, but now we have Cortana using the same, same criteria logic plus, plus forecasting tools. And here we have the same day, week, month, day, and uh, 
Well, here we can see accumulated cash, change cash, cash, and everything else. So, well, by looking at the dates, looking at the cash criteria we need, well, we are going to be able as well to, with the same GL accounts that you have, well, and if you understand the fields that I explained, you, you can then think of, well, what Business Central can do for me in the future so we have dimension chart of accounts segmentation and etc okay so you can try to uh, think of how the actual chart of accounts can be used right so uh, all the tools that you can use and well in later webinars because this is still explaining basics right then in the future you're going to going to be able to then uh, look into other webinars we have, maybe for the use of Cortana, for the account schedule creation, for to create your initial reports as an accountant, etc, etc. Okay, so, uh, but for now, this is the, the, the webinar, this is the end of the presentation, so thank you very much for your time, I don't know if you have further doubts, so uh, next time uh, we're going to have um, let me see another session and tell them, let me look for the actual uh, next webinar title is we're going to set up the posting groups that is another functional criteria okay for the those of you who are accountants okay how then <coughs> my um, inputs are done into the chart of accounts how the values fall into the chart of accounts coming from purchase sales and all the automated processes once we understand the basic configuration of the gl account and where it can be used we are now going to be learning you know just simple webinar an explanation of how do we input automated from other documents in the system into the chart of accounts okay so if you don't have further doubts this is the the final presentation the, the end of our webinar Thank you very much and see you next time.